All right, I'm going to give this a whirl. We don't have very good lighting. Let me light it up for you. So this mechanism back in here is your planetary drum. That's going to be uh, necessary to know for a little bit later. But what are we looking at here? This is a NP208 4x4 transfer case. This is what makes your um, four-wheel drive selectable an old non-all-wheel drive 4x4. And this right here is your drive sprocket and this is your driven sprocket. This whole assembly right here takes the input from the transmission comes through, this is your output shaft to the rear wheels right here. I'll get you a better view of this in a second. This is your output shaft going the other way to your front drive shaft. Now, the way this works is actually pretty simple. Right now it's in uh, what they call too high. In too high, it's just transmitting power to the rear tires in a high gearing, so it's good for road use. Now, we'll see if we can uh, show you what this looks like. In too high, there'll be this will be turning from the transmission and this gear here will be free spinning as it's turning. So as it's driving this, power is being transmitted to the rear tires. Now when that turns, when that turns, it's spinning that whole planetary with it. That's important to know. So let's see if we can get it shifted. It's kind of hard to do because it's not all together. Sorry, it's tough to shift it when it's not all together because there's another side of the case that holds it solid. This is a brace right here, which is the sliding mechanism for the selector. So right now, right now you can see this doesn't free spin anymore. This selector has uh, slid a synchronizing sleeve up, which is grabbed on to the back of this sprocket. Now, it's important to notice, you'll see that planetary drum far to the back there, this piece here, that's still free spinning. So this is what they call four high. This is, uh, if you need to use four wheel drive in bad conditions on the road, type of thing you'd, you'd be using four high it's still a high gearing uh, so it's good for for road driving um, still practical but you have drive to all four tires so as it's spinning it's free spinning it's now spinning our driven gear which is going out to our front drive shaft now you'll notice again that doesn't free spin anymore because that's locked in. Now I'll see if I can get it into four or low for you. All 
All right, we should be in four low now. Let's just verify here. Oh yeah. See, now we're spinning all four still. But if you look back there at that planetary, that's not spinning anymore. What's happened is, is that selector fork in the back, so not the front one anymore, this back one, has moved that planetary onto a locking block on the back. So now all the power that's being transmitted through this is being stepped down by that gearing right there. And what that's doing is basically giving you more power at a lower speed um, by gearing it down through the drivetrain. So the low gearing allows more engine revolutions before the drivetrain turns, which gives you better power and torque if you need to get out of a sticky situation or you're, you're moving something heavy, towing something heavy. Um, generally, you're not going to be using that on a road. So but that's the basics of how this works. It'd be really difficult for me to uh, show you the other mechanisms here because this is the most stripped down uh, I can have it and still still show how it works but we basically just did a, a rebuild on this replaced all the bearings and seals and everything um, all the needle bearings the chain was okay so luckily we didn't have to replace that but before I put it all back together and enclose it just want to do a quick video on it. This will be part of our automotive series. I got some other ones coming for you. Uh, eventually, I'm going to be doing the transmission, the engine on this, uh, differentials. But the one that I really want to do is when I do the brakes, I'm going to redo the front and rear brakes. And I'd like to uh, show you what all the components are because for a lot of you, that's stuff that you would actually probably use one day. I doubt many of you are going to go be like, oh, I'm going to go build a transfer case now. But is in terms of brakes, uh, I'm going to show you what all the components are, what they do, where they're located with drum and disc brakes. So hopefully get you up to speed if there's something that you, you don't already know. I know some of the people viewing know some of this stuff already. Some don't. I've been requested by a few people to do stuff like this, so trying to uh, entertain their fancies. See if I can get you a different view of the unit here. This is where the front shaft comes out. The yoke's not in there, but. <clears throat> and that is where that front selector moves the synchronizing sleeve behind that. So that's the old NP-208, lost generation, we're out.